Most of these new writers don't have the love of comics like these older writers had. Um, and all they care about is, how can I put myself in the book? No, we don't care what you would do if you were Iron Man. We don't care who you are. You're writing Tony Stark. You're not writing yourself in a book. If that's the case, write your own comic with you in it. No one will read it because nobody cares. People, people grew up, uh, are growing up loving Peter Parker, loving Miles Morales, loving all these Captain America. We don't need you to put your input in it. Just write Steve Rogers. Don't write Steve Rogers. What would Steve Rogers be if I was Steve Rogers? That's not how it works. But that's, again, how most of, the, most of these new people write nowadays. That's why most of the stuff is shit. Because we don't care how you would, what you would do, because we don't care about your life whatsoever. Just write a book, get paid for what you do, get paid for what you're supposed to be doing, and make it a, a good story. Glenn, thanks very much for taking the time today. Uh, it's been quite a week for you, but only on Wednesday, and it's already been quite a week. How's it been for you? You know, uh, um, it's crazy. It's uh, um, I never. I mean, it, we haven't even had a new comic book day, and it's already been it's already been out of control. You know, it's <laughs> um, uh, I never I never intended for the world um, for this to blow up. It was just. It was just me talking on one of my videos, just giving an, opi giving an opinion. I never thought that um, people would actually flip out over it. It's such a weird thing, isn't it? Because, like, I mean, I watched it the other day and I saw the reaction. And I'm quite an easygoing guy, right? I, I never get angry. And I was, like, incensed when I saw what was happening, you know? Because I think I just felt, it, I hate a pile on, right? You know, I hate it when when people jump on an individual. Uh, and it just seems so unfair. It was like professionals were doing it. You know, there was that weird kind of group of, um, you know, sort of online uh, Twitter crazies that were doing it. Most people I've found out since, though, agreed with you. You know, have you found that yourself? Have you found the reaction generally positive? Yeah, um, most of, um, except for, you know, a few of the people, except for, you know, I mean, which I was, I was very surprised that professionals would be the ones that would be flipping out and being being the way they are. You know, I mean, that's. That was that was very that was very shocking. But um, I have got so many more. Um, I mean, I've got tons of. Hey, we're behind you 100. percent We agree with you. Finally, someone came out and said something, and uh, um, it was uh, yeah. I've got I've got tons of it. I mean, hell, in one day, I've got a thousand new subscribers to my YouTube videos. You know, I mean, That's great. Um, I only had like three thousand to begin with it, so it, it multiplied. You know, it's. Um, um, but yeah, pretty much it's been positive. I mean, here you are, you reached out to me. Um, I got some messages from Gail Simone um, and a couple other creators have on their Twitter, which I don't have. I don't, I don't even have Twitter. You know, it's, uh, uh, people tell me, hey, this guy's, this guy's supporting you. This person's supporting you, you know, it's, uh, um, but it all seems to be again from old time, the, you know, the, the, the old time writers, the guys that have been around for a while that, that, yeah. that have, that have been. Um, you know, it's, uh, I mean, it's weird, um, because I'm, I'm just a guy that just likes to, I mean, I know I have a YouTube channel and stuff, so I'm in the limelight a little, but I'm not trying to be in the limelight. I just like to go about my day and just like, just be under the radar, you know, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, um, yeah. So it's just, it's just, uh, it's just crazy with the reaction that it is, but a lot of, most of it's, believe it or not, has been positive, you know, it's, uh. Well, you know, just um, to recap, for people who, who maybe don't know, you know, to, to recap a little bit of what happened is, you know, on, on your YouTube channel, which was, you know, a little bit was sort of taken out and put online, you know, a, a couple of minutes where you were chatting about comics and, you know, you're a retailer, you've got 30 years experience in retail. And what you were saying was, it's really struggling. The American comic book scene we hear all the time is doing amazing, but you're just talking about how difficult it is and and the thing I said is we hear from armchair generals all the time. Even I'm an armchair general. You know, I'm not front fa customer facing the way you are. But the guys that you can't argue with is the retailers in terms of this stuff because it's not opinion, it's fact. You know, you guys, it's, it's a science. It's not an opinion, isn't it? Because you can actually see what is being sold, what is not being sold, how many people are coming into your shop. You see the footfall as a physical presence, don't you? And that's what I find so interesting because I've got a lot of friends in retail. And they're saying the same thing you're saying, but you're actually raising your head up and actually saying it out loud, which is what caused the problems for you. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm not just a, 
I'm not just, I mean, I'm, I'm a retailer, but I'm also a huge fan, you know, yeah. it's, uh, um, so, I mean, just, just for that, it's, uh, um, I mean, I'm saying just as a fan that, I mean, I just want to read a good story that, you know, that, that's, yeah. that's what I, that's what I really want. And that's like on our, on our, on our thing. It's, it's funny because it's a catchphrase we use a lot. Just tell me a good story, but mm. you know, someone that's all, that's all we want. I just, yeah. I want to be able to open up a book and look forward to reading, especially like a mainstream comic uh, again and getting the feeling that you always got from it. You know, it's, uh, yeah. and so much has just changed. And why do you think you hit such a nerve? You know, because I mean, I I think I'm always slightly in awe of retailers. Like I remember the first time I discovered a comic shop. I'm sure you were the same when I was 13 years old, and I was like, "Oh my god, these guys do this all day. This is amazing." <laughs> you know, like I just, <laughs> this this looks like the most fun job in the world. And and retailers always kind of had this incredible knowledge. You know, you'd go in there like in your 1980s comics, but they were telling you about 70s and 60s and 50s comics. You know. And they and they had them up in the wall and everything, you know. I, I was always kind of in awe, and that's why I was kind of surprised when you just came in and said, "Look, retail's having a really tough time with a lot of the quality of the mainstream American market," and people went crazy. What do you? What, what was the nerve you hit? Do you think? Because it, it really was such a crazy overreaction, especially from pros. I, I I don't I don't know why they. I mean I mean I don't think people like the I don't think people like to told be told that um, stuff's not good or I mean. You know, I mean, people. I mean, I didn't single anybody out. You know, I didn't. Yeah. Um, I I didn't single anybody out. I I, I used for instances with uh, with some of the titles. You know, just I mean, they weren't those those titles and those writers. Those titles weren't being singled out either. Yeah. I just was using them as, for instance, Peter Parker. Spider Man's my favorite character, mm -hmm. so I'm very devoted to Peter Parker. And um, um, I don't know why they. I don't know why they flipped out. I just think. I just think that a lot of people. Um, um, I mean. I like to think I spoke the truth and people don't, the, sometimes the truth hurts, you know, it's, uh, um, but yeah, to, to flip out like that, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny because I think the thing that, that got, got my goat, you know, was that it felt like these tactics that have been used for a little while, you know, like if somebody strays outside of the narrative, a mob forms very quickly, a digital mob forms, and it's a relatively small number of people, but they're very vocal and very vicious and they try and destroy someone, you know, they come in and, you know, they try and deplatform people, they try and demonetize them in some way, you know. And I think that's what angered me. But I think something weird happened with you. And I think it it was a Spartacus moment, right? I know it sounds crazy, but I think like people have just had enough of this, you know, and they can see it with their own eyes when they walk into the comic store. The stores are not healthy just now. They're nothing like they've been in our lifetimes. And uh and I think there was a weird catalyst, like your thing really just was a bit of a turning point, I think. And everybody, the number of people who were talking to me privately and sending me links to your thing saying, this is outrageous, you know, and the, the response I got when I retweeted it and talked about it too, I just think people start enough is enough. And what's interesting is I call them cancel pigs. And it's the people, you know, that try and take other people down, try and uh, destroy people online. You know, they all went into hiding. It was really interesting. I think there was a couple of hours where it was the usual shenanigans where they were looking to lynch someone. And then it just flipped and everybody was like, oh, no, hang on. This is actually quite shameful what they're doing. And people are deleting their tweets. So all the cancel pigs all scarpered, which I thought was really fascinating. And I don't know, I just hope for me, comics is fun, isn't it? You know, like I, I get into comics because I love it. You know, you don't want to see these kind of, you know, these weird things happening like this, you know, where people are out to hurt other people. I I agree. I mean, the, the, that's I mean what is a comic shop i mean you're going in and they're fun just like you yeah. said i mean you, you you go in there to to escape the real world um you know i mean because we all know that um you know th there isn't a big green guy smashing smashing a guy in a metal suit it doesn't happen but it, yeah. it's your escapism from what's going on in the real world yeah. um we don't need a lot of that that real world stuff in the comics either you know i mean just just let us just just Post, just make something that's fun and something that's uh you know something that is entertaining um you know uh i mean again some of these guys i mean i know some of them you know someone says oh look this, this guy pulled his tweet down this guy pulled his tweet down because he's uh he's been getting trashed on too much or whatever um they probably shouldn't have tweeted it anyways you know it's um but i mean i get it i mean most of these people what did they have the what did they have to um to to, to say i mean the, it was more of Oh look, it's the fat old bald guy. You know, it's a uh, typical comic store owner. 
I mean, that's where you go. I mean, they they didn't come back with any with any retort of no, this is why I, we we do this. So this is this is my thinking on how how I wrote this book. It was all oh, it's the fat guy over there. You know what I mean? So it makes no sense. Well, I thought you you total dignity. I thought actually because. There's an expression in politics over here was that you don't play the man, you play the ball. You know, like you don't go after the individual. And I thought your criticisms were very broad. They were very general. You were just like, I'm not really enjoying any of this stuff that, that the big two are putting out right now, you know. And that's why I think it was doubly sickening, you know, when they then started coming after you. But again, I think you had the opposite reaction because I think everybody I spoke to was on your side. Everybody. So yeah. I think you've turned yourself into a superstar here. I mean, you are now Spartacus. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that wasn't my goal. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, I'm, like, I mean, you're on the front lines, right? And I talk, I'm, I'm obsessed with retail, right? Because retail's our bread and butter, right? You know, like, uh, I write comics, but they don't get to readers without retailers. So anywhere I am in the world, that drives my wife crazy. When we're on holiday, I'll say, let's seek out the comic shop. And I always go and I talk to the comic store guys and ask how things are. And what you're saying is just what everyone has said to me for about five, six, seven years. You know, like, I mean, what what is your experience? Because we see opinions online, right? But you you see the numbers, right? You're you're holding physical copies of comics. Where would you say the direct market is right now compared to your experience of it 10 years ago, even? You know, like I know you've got 30 years experience, but compared to 2013, you know, what does it feel like to you? Um, you know, I mean, it's it's down, but I mean comics is still strong yeah. it's the big two that we're losing that we're losing the the mainstream stuff i mean i promote a lot of indie books so yeah. i can get some of these guys that aren't liking what they're reading from marvel and dc mm -hmm. to try a different indie book but yeah. there are some guys who just want to read just all superheroes and i get yeah. that too because i love my superheroes sure. um and those are the guys that we're losing at least I'm I'm able to, for for someone when it says hey this is this is this is not good well yeah. hey why don't you try this book um, yeah. this book this book you may like and they may or they may not and if they don't I find another book for them that they that to to they to they like it but um unfortunately um some of the people that just are only Marvel DC they're slowly buying less and less and less and eventually if they don't if something doesn't change they're those people are going to be gone. Yeah. And how important do you think Marvel and DC are to the overall American business? Uh, uh, I think, um, unfortunately, I think um, I think if they go, most comic shops go. You, you know, it's, uh, I mean, they are, I mean, there's a reason why they call them the big two. They really, they are, you know, it's, um, um, and it's, and it's hard. I mean, it's hard. I mean, you've got the independent, you've got the independent books. Um, that tell great stories, but it's not Spider-Man. You, you know, it's it's not. It doesn't have that seventy years or eighty years of of um, of history. You, you know, it's uh, so for um, you know. I mean, when some people come who come in that just want to relive their childhood and try a few books out again of 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 they were reading Hulk or whatever. Um, Hulk is nowhere near what they ever ever read. Um, they may not they they may not like it or they may like it but uh um i think when when they when if those two go i i think that's when you'll you'll just see you'll see 90% of the comic shop just gone well tell tell me like um do you find that whenever marvel and dc is doing well everything does well and the opposite of that too like if marvel and dc are struggling it becomes hard to sell even really great indie books too yes yes because um you're still getting less you're still getting less people coming into the store now um, because I mean, they're coming in for the known brand um, and, or again, they're so disenchanted with what they're reading. Yeah. They don't want to take a chance on something new just because they're like, yeah, what's it going to be the same old, same old. And it's really, it's sometimes it's really difficult to get them to, to, to try the other things. Well, see, I I'm interested in this because I remember you know, back when I was at Marvel, like that Marvel renaissance that Joe Quesada had going was really interesting because we had a creator-owned boom come out of that around about 2008 to 2013 um, because everybody was in buying their Marvel comics at the time and DC was doing very well at the time too. So it meant books like Kick-Ass and all my kind of stuff and everything was able to sell because we had a, 
a, a, a high footfall in comic stores. But it was also the same if you think about it back in the 80s as well, when the image guys were uh, making their bones over at Marvel, you know, that, that boosted them up and then they were able to go to image after huge mainstream Marvel success. And even the Marvel Universe kind of came out of DC doing very well at the very end of the 1950s, early 1960s. So people have to be in the habit of picking up big mainstream comics before they try new things, don't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean that's 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 your show. And that's and that's a lot of times how you can you can see what creators you like because mm-hmm. they've been reading the mainstream comics. These guys have now made it have, have now excelled over what they were doing, like you like yourself, you know. It's uh um and then you branched off and you did and you did your own thing. People will follow you because they've already because you've because they liked you for what the what you were doing on the characters that they loved. That they're willing to take the chance on something brand new and say, "I'm still going to try that." Mark Mark Miller wrote Mark Miller wrote the Spider Man book I liked. I'm trying his Kick Ass book, and and that's and that's how it builds. I think there's uh, to me it seems like such a no brainer, but the number of people that I see, especially online, you know, saying burn it all down, you know, would be so much better without Marvel and DC. They're tired old companies, you know. I think they really missed that point, don't they? That the 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 malaise and the the comic stores just now is down to the fact people aren't coming in at all because they've dropped out of the habit of buying the Marvel and DC books. Yeah, yeah. It's um. I mean, if if there's no Marvel and DC books, you're not getting people to come in come into the store. Yeah. And what do you think if you did lose the direct market? And I think you know Chuck rosansky has been talking about this. Phil Boyle down in Florida has been talking about it. If the direct market went, what do you think the comic scene is going to look like in America? Um, I think the, I think at that point, um, I think at that point, um, you're not like, again, you're not going to see many comic shops. Um, cause now if we've got to start buying individuals from, you know, each and every co- independent company, it's not going to be profitable. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to probably just see digital, which mm-hmm. I'd hate to see. I mean, I, I don't like turning on my computer, <laughs> you know, half the time I, I like to, I like to sit down with a book or a comic book or a newspaper and read it and read it that way. You know, um, yeah. you're going to see digital, but from what I, from, from most of the people who come in the shop, even the younger people, they don't want to read it digital. There's a reason why they come into the shop. They want to, they want to, they want to sit and read the comic. They want to have the experience of being in there and, and shooting the shit with other, with yeah. other, uh, with other people who like the, the same stuff, you know? So, um, I don't think that, I think if, if that, if, if they were gone, I don't, I don't think we have a comic market. Yeah. And the digital thing's funny, isn't it? Cause I see a lot of people saying, oh, we should just give up paper and go entirely digital, but they've been trying, Marvel and DC were very, very keen to get that going because it would cut out retail, cut out distribution, and it would be almost entirely pure profit. But it just didn't catch on. Like it, it never really sold more than ten percent, usually much less, of print sales. So for fifteen years, they tried to get that going. And Comicsology's kind of wrapped up now, hasn't it? Yeah, Ram. Um, you know, so when I, I never thought when when they were pushing it. I mean, you heard customers come in. This is the end of the comics. That digital is going to be way to go. I hope not. And 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 I always thought I said, no, I don't think so. Um, there are going to be people who do want digital because they, you know, they prefer not to leave the house. They, you know, it's, it's simple. They could, they can read it on their tablet or whatever, but it was always going to be a small percentage that, and it proved that it was still just a small, a, sp- a small percentage. I mean, me personally, I think that if comics went digital, I probably wouldn't read comics anymore because yeah. that that's not the way I want to, that's not the way I want to read them. Because even as a creator, I mean, I'm guilty of this too, you know, like you work at Marvel and DC, you go off and do your own thing and then hopefully you build something out of that. But but it's not been healthy for the industry, hasn't it? I mean, it's, you know, good in certain periods for, for individual creators, but the industry itself with everybody disappearing and going off and doing creator owns has meant a destabilized Marvel and DC. Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, but I also wish, I wish... Um... I mean, I would like to see some of the some of them come back for maybe just a six issue run, mm. just to just to show, you know, a story to to write a story to show people, hey, look, this is how these books should be written, and maybe someone else that comes in will will take off from that, yeah. and 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 go because um, I mean, and I'm not saying hey, you need to go work for Marvel again, but I'm telling you, if you went and, and did a car- did did a story at Marvel. It would probably be the number one book that would for that month ordered. You know, it's uh, um, and if we could get 
you know, 10, 15 creators to say, yeah, I want to do a six issue series. And I know that's just wishful thinking, you know, but it's, um, um, I think people would see what comics, how, how comics should be written and, and, and how those characters should be written. And just maybe someone there at Marvel or DC, but I'm not signaling out Marvel, um, would say, all right, we need to hire some guys or we need to hire some guys with some with some plans here, not just any random thing that that comes out. I, I totally agree. I mean, I talked about this a few months ago and what I, I felt was you can't do it with just one or two creators. I think it has to be all the best creators who are currently available, you know, 20 creators, you know, to, to get everyone to come back. Or, you know, and I don't just mean veterans, I mean people who are excellent, but maybe on the indie scene just now. But you have to make it really financially viable for them to do it as well, to make it attractive. And I came up with this plan where, you know, there was a much more generous back-end royalty scheme. If you can get your sales over 60,000, so you've got this monetized motivator, you know, to get people selling a lot. But what do you think that would do? I mean, see, as a retailer, compared to what you're doing at the moment, if you had a bunch of, you know, huge names, you know, if you had like, I don't know, Olivia Coypel and and Joss Whedon or something like that doing the Avengers, if you would Grant Morrison and Frank Quitely doing Spider-Man and so on. How much do you think you could jack up sales on your Marvel books if you had those really plus guys again? Um, I mean, just, um, I mean, I don't know if sales would double, but, you know, I mean, you would see a significant, I think you would see a significant rise. Because yeah. the, 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 these comic, uh, most, a lot of these comic readers, are big fans of them. So no matter yeah. where they go, they will read, they will read whatever they write or yeah. try at least try a story that they write. And just maybe after they're off their run that they, they do, maybe a six issue run or whatever, whatever they decided that was going to be, that was going to be done. Um, those people may, may say, when I really love this character for the 12 issues, six issues that I read it. Um, let's see where this book goes. And, I mean, that's the only way you're going to build it up. You need to get someone there to see where it goes. Because if you look at like Marvel and DC, the real golden period for them in relatively modern times would be mid 80s to late 80s. And it was quite a short amount of time, but it did buy them an awful long time afterwards because people were in the habit of the comics and they fell in love with the characters, wouldn't they? So you, I think you only even almost need it for a couple of years and it gets people back into the swing of it, doesn't it? I think so. I think so. But um, I don't know again i don't know if these creators would want to do it for a couple of years i mean because i mean they better i mean they need to they'll need to raise i mean again i don't know what the pay rate is for for what they pay you guys or what anything but i mean they're gonna have to make it they're gonna have to make it so you you know you're willing to stop doing a creator own thing to come yeah. and do something that you're just getting paid for they're gonna have to make that they're gonna have to make the the pay the pay rate beneficial for the creators yeah well, that, I mean, that's it. Like Marvel, for example, uh, when I started, um, God, 23 years ago, they paid $90 a page. Um, and I quickly got mine up to about $1,000 a page, you know, by about three or four, three, maybe three, four years later. Um, and a few guys were on those kind of rates. But now I'm hearing, you know, literally a generation later, there's people working for less than $90 a page, you know, a tiny fraction that we were working for. And you know, you're never going to get people to come back for that that kind of that kind of money. And and like, I don't know. I mean, I, I think you just have to rethink it. I mean, because we, we had a blank piece of paper whenever they came up with the royalty scheme in the first place. But the situation that comics is in right now, I think something radical like that kind of really has to be done to to get people back. And I think it I think it'll also be great for the indie scene because indie sales are minuscule as well. You know, overall broadly, they're they're, they're minuscule compared to what they were. Um, when you look at, especially compared to things like Dogman and so on, all these other things outside of comics, like I talked about this before, but um, Publishers Weekly had the numbers, which was the American uh, scene, the, the graphic novel scene in America is only 9% American produced products. And that includes all the, the indie books too, you know? So, um, but that's your big, your big thing you would say to people being on the front lines, a strong Marvel and DC will help everyone. You think? I think so. Yeah, I, I totally, I totally do because that's, I mean, that is what actually is getting people into people into the store. They're mm. strong. I think everyone else will be strong, will be strong too. And that doesn't seem a controversial message. I mean, you know, this week you seem to be like the new Trump or Tucker Carlson or something like this, you know, where <laughs> the whole thing is becoming weirdly politicized, you know? But I mean, yeah. just, you just yeah. want to read some good comics. and. That's you know. <laughs> 
That's it. I just want to read. Just tell me a good story. You know, that's uh, <laughs> that's all I'm asking for. There was nothing political that was in my statements. Uh, yeah. um, I I if, if people who watch my videos, you never hear me say anything political, anything like yeah. that. It's just about comics or what we're talking about in the store at that time. It could be yeah. sports cards, wrestling, whatever, you know, but it's uh, um, yeah, I don't I mean, I don't give my opinions on who's president, who's not. No, that, you know, <laughs> something like I. Like I said in, 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 in that video where I said, um, you know, don't write yourself in the book because we don't care. Well, people don't care what people don't care who I like either. You know, I mean, I, it, so, you know, so I don't write myself into my own video, even though I'm in it. You know, it's it just um, it's just crazy how they try to make it all political and whatnot, because it was it was nothing like that. It was pretty much just saying. Stop writing crap and put out a good story. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, like I say, I really hope this is a turning point, honestly, Glenn, because uh... You know, I, I salute you for your 30 years you've been doing this. I mean, I, I just said on Twitter that the only reason I have this great life that I'm lucky to have is because of the people that have been selling the books, you know, for my entire career, you know. So I just want to say thank you, you know, and I think it's brilliant what you do. And thanks for getting up early every day and making the trek into the comic store and hopefully bringing in a, a new generation of comic book addicts. I hope so. I hope so. I hope hopefully we can get it going in before it's time for me to retire. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> but I, I really, I appreciate, I appreciate all your kind words. I appreciate you sticking up for me. You know, it's, uh, um, uh, I mean, like I said, the, the last thing that I ever thought is, Oh, Hey, Mark Miller wants to talk to you. You know, it's, uh, this guy doesn't even know who I am, but you know, I, I, I appreciate that. You know, it's, well, you're, you're going up on this interview page with all the, the comic book creators, you know, like all the guys I love. I, I do this thing. I try and do about two or three a month, although I'm always late with them. Um, I love to do a big interview with uh, guys I, I, I just love, you know, from the comic book industry. So so you're in amongst that crowd now. You know, you'll be there forever on YouTube, on our channel. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, I hope this is a turning point too, because what I really loved, I think that, that here's the one bit I hope I take away from this is a guy comes up with an opinion that doesn't quite fit the narrative where they're saying, no, everything's fine. Everybody piles on him, but then everybody defends him. And the people who were piling on really felt ashamed, I think, you know, and they should be. And I want it to become a fashionable thing, you know, to to not accept this anymore, you know, like because we've seen it. I mean, I get into comics just because it's fun and I love it, you know. So, like, the idea that you pile on people and try and destroy them and everything, that's got to become shameful. You know, anybody who was involved in that kind of behaviour will be remembered, you know, like nobody, nobody wants to work with people like that, you know, or they don't want to be friends with people like that, you know, so like, I, I hope this is a turning point, and I, I think it is, I, I weirdly do, I've I've been really quite heartened when I see the response, uh, listen, good luck to you, and I hope the shop has huge success, I'm going to do my bit, I'll try and work hard and make sure you've got something decent to, to sell on my part. Hey, you know something? I, I I don't think, I don't think there's been anything that doesn't sell right now that you've, that you've written, so <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> very kind. yeah. So I mean, yeah. So uh, yeah, you keep up the great work. You know, it's it's been, you know, it's um everything. People just buy stuff. Oh, Mark Miller's doing this. Um, I, I need to try it. You know, it's uh they're maybe mistaking yeah. me for Frank Miller. Maybe they're thinking it's Frank Miller and buying it by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank, thanks again for taking the time, Glenn. I know you've got the, the shop to to open this morning and everything as well, so I won't take up any more of your time. But thank I you and, and, and continued success. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time out to uh, to do this chat. I, I really, I really appreciate it. All the best to you, Glenn. See you then. All right. Sorry about the video too. You know? <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> See you later. All right. Thank you.